Yo, what's going on guys? Danny's Mobile Weldon here. Today I wanted to talk about some things you should definitely have before you go into this business. You're probably thinking, well maybe I need to get insured first before I start. Or maybe I need to get certified as a welder before I start. And although that is true, you should have those things, you don't necessarily need them. But the main thing you need before you start this business is a plan B. That plan B can be in the form of a cash savings account um, or, you know, in your bank account. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be cash as long as you have easy access to it in case of an emergency. So, yeah. You can need an emergency fund because stuff happens. And or, and I can't emphasize enough on the and or, you're going to need a backup vehicle. Um, not just any vehicle. You're going to need a truck, a backup truck. Yes, I know. I get it. You can get away with welding in a CRV, in a Honda CRV, if you put your generator, um, a little camping generator in there, and a small welder. Yes, it's doable. I understand that. However, you don't, you want to do this right, and you want... A, a good pickup truck that can carry all your tools it can have the ability to um, pull anything that you need it to or haul anything you needed to um, and and that may also include having a trailer remember when I first started this business I actually started with a uh, 73 liter utility body with a um, and I was pulling a trailer. I was pulling a, 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 what was it? It was the Lincoln Weldon Power 225 ACDC. I had the acetylene tanks and oxygen tanks on it. I had a toolbox on it. And I had spools for my leads. That way I could store them easily. Now, that trailer ended up messing up on me. So I just took everything off the trailer and put it on the rig and made it a dedicated welding rig that may or may not have been the best choice and i i always knew this but you know i was thinking hey i got a 73 liter diesel this thing ain't gonna break down legendary but shit happens stuff happens and you can't predict it that's where the emergency fund comes in and the uh backups you have a backup truck where you have a separate machine and or you could just unload the machines off your main rig put it in there and you're good to go, you can do jobs. Instead of waiting in the shop like I'm doing right now, and you know, it's been about three weeks and I'm not, I'm just exhausting through my funds. It happened at a time where I was vulnerable. But luckily, I had a plan. And this is the last one. This is the last time. As you guys know, I've been, uh, I've been, chewing into my uh, uh, backup savings and whatever. And, um, you know, uh, this is it. This is all I got. And I see why most businesses fail in the first two years. Matter of fact, if I didn't have that fund, or if I wasn't living the lifestyle that I was living, staying in an RV, then honestly, I'd be, I'd be all set. I'd go under as well. But... My business is a lot more versatile than that. And that's because I really have nothing to lose. Like I said, I started this business uh, while I was homeless. So what's the worst that can happen? You know what I'm saying? You can only go, the bottom for me is where I'm still at. I don't think I'm better than anyone. I'm not at the top. I'm by no nowhere where I need to be, you know? But I am progressing, like I said. I still, to this day, take most of my money and reinvest it back in my tools. I got top-notch tools, all updated. But that's also, um, that's a benefit to me because now I don't, this is a uh, debt-free company. You know what I'm saying? I don't owe anything. This every I own it. Um, I own the truck. I own the tools. I don't got to pay anyone for anything. This allows me to be more flexible as I'm not obligated to make payments to anyone. Um, I live in an RV, so I, like, again, I'm not obligated to make payments for anyone. 
Except for child support, of course. This is a job where you may not want to quit your day job ASAP. You definitely don't. This is something you want to, to uh, slowly step into and build your way up. Not something you want to dive in immediately unless you have nothing to lose like I did. Nothing to lose. So um, that's my best advice that I can give you. Before you go in, make sure you have at least two trucks. If you're going to dedicate yourself to this full time like I did, make sure you have two trucks and or a trailer. A mobile welding trailer that has all the fixings. Um, we're going to be working on that within the next month. My goal is to get a second truck, and it's going to be a gasser. It doesn't have to be diesel. But for me, for my preferences, it has to be at least, you know, a half-ton pickup, you know? F-250 or uh, 2,500 or better, you know? Um, F-150 is just not going to cut it. Yes, it will do the job, but I need a backup truck, and I'm thinking ahead. I need a backup truck to pull my RV, which is going to need, you know, a stronger vehicle with better suspension. I'm going to be hauling a lot of tools in the backup truck. I can't just get an F-150 and the thing is going to be sagging. I'm going to be looking crazy. It's going to put a lot of strain on my suspension. Our tools are heavy. This is why we have to try to think ahead. I had a feeling this was going to happen. This was my worst fear of getting rid of the welding trailer. But we live, we learn. I'm still in the game. I'm by no means quitting, like I said. This is the bottom for me. I got nothing to lose. Nothing. And everything to gain. So, alright guys, take care. Bye.